wake up. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Okay, so it's Jeff and Jeremy here. The first vaccine patient has started talking. I don't know if you saw this. It was a big deal. Um, you know, the UK got their vaccine a couple of weeks ago, uh, but we finally. Wait, 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 we, whatever, whatever happened to Putin in Russia? <laughs> Remember, he was like, "Yes, we have vaccine, and we give vaccine." Uh, this was like three months ago. He was like, "Oh, we've, really? We've got first vaccine ever." And it is very successful because we are Russian, I am small, and I am the first to get it out. But he was probably just injecting people after that. He was probably just injecting people with vodka. We didn't hear anything <laughs> after the vaccine. That. After the vaccine that was developed in Russia, we didn't hear anything about it. Like, did it work? I mean, right. did their numbers go down? Did they get it more immunity? I mean, we, we heard nothing about it after after the fact that he said that they had the first vaccine. Now, I've heard a couple things about this, and we'll, we'll chat about it in a second. I want to play the uh, Sarah's comments. So Sarah Lindsay is the first person. She's a critical care nurse, who I believe in New York, yeah, New York City, who got the first injection, and it was on television. Did you see her? Did you see her sitting there getting the the, the inject? Just like we go to the Rite Aid and uh, and you get the or the wherever you get your flu vaccine, mm-hmm. uh, it's the same thing. But she was sitting in a chair, and um, from what I understand is, and according to this, there's two shots you get. It's two. It's a two phase deal. You get the first one, and then a week or two later, you get the second one. And this is this is what she said she feels like. I am feeling really, really well. No aches, no pains, just a slight bruising at the injection site, no fever. I took my temperature to this morning just to see what it was, and it was 98.1. All right. Now, the first one I heard doesn't affect you. It's when you get the second. Excuse me. I'm sorry. When you get the second one. So you have to do one. Have, so the vaccine is not just one shot? No, it's a two-shot phase. This one that we're getting from Pfizer. Now, I don't know about the other ones. Um, but from what I understand, when you get the second one, I don't know if you guys have heard this, it makes you very sick for like three or four days. It makes you very sick. You get a very, I've, people have said they've had a, you know, I mean, I mean, it's, it's a couple of days getting sick versus possibly going to the hospital, dying or giving it to somebody else who could die, who has a very compromised immune system. I, I'm not knocking this in any way, but there is a two phase, two step treatment See, here. I'm going to knock on wood on this one. And I'm just going to say. We were we were going over uh, time taken off for sick time uh, this year between Jeremy and I uh, before the show this morning. Did you hear any of this, by the way, Cameron? Uh, the sick time or the vaccine? No, the sick time. When we were talking about taking sick days, did you hear this? Because I'm there's off the air. I'm going to ask you a question. If you didn't hear it, uh, I didn't. Uh, no, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, I want you to guess how many days Jeff took sick in 2020 so far, and how many days I've taken sick. In 2020 so far. Now, obviously, you know, Monday I was out. So go ahead. You had a big tummy ache. (laughs) (laughs) Too much Um, cacao over the weekend, huh? (laughs) I think Jeff has taken like three days off. And I think Jeremy has taken 30. (laughs) (laughs) That's 10% of what Jeremy has taken. No, I have taken two sick days in 2020. Jeff has taken one. Nope. Zero. Zero. You took I have, zero? I've taken five hours collectively, and that is due to like things like doctor's appointments and things like that. Yeah, and now I have you some vacation for extended weekend type deals, but that's about it. You know, two days, two sick days is, is pretty good. And this is what I'm getting at, okay? I have not taken a full sick day this year for the first time in a very long time. Now, keep in mind. I don't think we're getting kids. sick. I think we're washing our hands yes. more. We're being, we're staying away from people. Yes. I so, think I mean, part yeah, of it is attributed to my kids and they have given me uh, herd immunity over the last uh, uh, seven years. But then also, also, I'm going to attribute it to the fact that I can't get around anybody. I'm like a guy working on Tom Cruise's set, and um, I have to wear a mask all the time, and I'm washing my hands all the time because, man alive, I've not felt better in my life than I have felt in 2020. I have not been sick once. Once I thought maybe I might be coming down with something, but I think it was a psychological thing. And after that, I was like, the next day I woke up, I was fine. And I was like, oh, okay. Whatever. So I'm going to forego the vaccine for now because the two shot thing does not sound fun. Uh, the, the whole, uh, you get sick for three days thing does not sound fun. And I'm going to keep washing my hands. Yeah. And I, I'm going to keep social distancing. I understand and I'm going to keep wearing You the realize mask. the risk though. I mean, the risk is if you get it and you're asymptomatic, for example, and I, I and you, you can pass with, it along to somebody who could get very sick. I preface this with, 
Knock on wood. Okay. I think I don't it sounds very be selfish. That, I don't want to be that person. It's not very selfish because no, it's well, very it, selfish it is, that you're not going to get the from vaccine. From the standpoint that I do not want to do harm to my body because it is relatively unknown. Now you brought up the point yesterday that by the time I would qualify for even getting the shot or the two shots or whatever it is that there would be a lot of uh you know trials that are, are there would be a lot of people that have gotten the vaccine and there would be success stories that match it and it would be fine and if I feel comfortable with it at that point in time great I'll go for it but it's a little premature then, to say you're not going to get it now cuz you're probably not going to be eligible to get it If somebody April. came to me today and Maybe said, said you have to if you have to get this vaccine you have to get it right now I'd say no I'd say no I'm not getting the vaccine I won't get the vaccine right now I will wait I want to wait to see what happens because your thoughts, Cameron. I think that's valid. I I mean, I I think personally, if someone came up to me and said, do you want the vaccine right now? I don't want to wait and see how the first five people do. You want to see how well they've, they've <laughs> already like, given it to thousands. For, for me, it's of like thousands five million. I want to see how the first five million do after six months of it. We, you know, that's we, where I stand. The vaccine's been available now in the UK for for almost a month, and they've given it to I'm sure hundreds of thousands of people by now. And well, we haven't heard anybody his, die yet. His 401k yeah. is heavily invested in Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I do have quite a few stocks in Moderna. So, um, <laughs> boo Pfizer. No. It kills everyone. Get the Moderna vaccine. It's only one shot, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, fuck her up. Give me money. <laughs> But I'm I, I'll probably get the vaccine in you know just whenever I'm eligible because well, yeah. by then it it'll by then and that's my us, point is you're not you know the three of us are not going to need to get it right away we're not frontline workers we're not compromised so we're going to have to wait probably until March April May and by then I think I'll be ready to get it um so for for the bottom line is don't trust anything that we're saying but you can trust the people. Yeah. At Paso Robles Ford. Well, exactly, because we're not doctors, but they are experts when it comes to cars. To Fords. And, not and, the, they're not doctors either. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and from what I understand, uh, this happens at the end of the year. Every year, you know, they got to get make room for the new car, so they're making deals. They need to get stuff off the lot. This is uh, the best time to buy a new vehicle. Uh, we've been talking about it for quite some time because of COVID and all the different allowances. But if you've missed all that, I'm telling you, you're going to want to get on it because things are going to turn around here by the time we get through the next quarter. And right now, the 2020s, especially the SUVs, are um, are, are where it's at. 72-month financing plus $2,000 trade assist, and you don't have to make a payment for three months, for 90 days. Um, the great thing about this is um, we're talking about uh, love. That's what Valentine's Day is all about, right? It's all about the love. You know what you're going to love about Valentine's Day? You go to Paso Robles Ford right now, you won't have a payment on your new car until Valentine's Day. That is what you are going to love. That's love, about baby. Valentine's Day and 0% uh, financing. You can't beat the deals, uh, but I, as Jeremy said, once you take the two shots, chances are <laughs> those those interest rates will come back. <laughs> What the hell? Are you, you're trying to tie this together, and it's a stretch. I, I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you know, who knows how long these interest rates are going to be at 0% for a new car. Not yeah. very long. Once everybody starts getting the vaccine and we don't have to be scared yeah. of everybody, of our neighbors, of people, then, you know, who knows if these deals are going to be here. I get it. Uh, you don't have to drive there to save there, but they want you to know it's a safe, clean environment. They have contactless delivery. Uh, come, click, or call to Paso Robles Ford. Go to PasoFord.com. Things we didn't get to in hashtag form with Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Hashtag, they're making a podcast. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have signed a multi-million dollar deal with Spotify to host and produce their very own podcast. It's not just their podcast. It is a podcast's network of sorts. They're going to be developing other 
podcasts. Um, these are just going to be terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. They are. They're going to be terrible. It's going to be about like humanitarian. I mean, it's not going to be very compelling stuff. It's going to be a very informational, I would imagine. And they have access to some of the most remarkable people in the world. Well, she's an actress. Yes. I don't know much about him. I haven't really heard from him much. So maybe it, it'll be a good... Don't they have a place in Montecito? Yeah, that's where they live. Oh, they live there full time now? Mm-hmm. Wait, he's the prince. Yeah. They, Isn't yeah. that a problem? No, he said he didn't want to be the prince anymore. And oh, said, so he's not the prince you know, anymore. He said, I want to be an American. So why why are they still calling him Prince Harry? Because like, he'll always be known as Prince okay. Harry. So they're, they're doing multiple shows. Um, so I don't know. What are these shows about? What are they called? Oh my gosh, they're they're called podcasts. I mean, they're no, they're, I mean, they're what, in a development deal right you don't now. Just call them podcasts. Well, yeah. So it's a, it's with Spotify and um, said here that they were doing a podcast, but I understand they're they're they doing... are going to create shows that spotlight diverse perspectives and voices. Their first project is going to be hosting a holiday special produced with Gimlet Studio. And it will feature stories of hope and compassion from inspirational mm. guests in celebration of the new year. That sounds boring to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. But they it's have not... a big following, right? I mean, you look at all the people that come out for the oh, wedding and all this kind of stuff. I so understand. There's an audience They're royals. There. They're royals. So, built-in audience. So be it. I mean, it's it's. there's definitely something that they're doing right as, by being born into the right family. <laughs> that goes back to the royal the conversation that I always have. I don't understand the royals. I don't understand people's fascination with them. It, I guess if he marries an American actress, then there is some one Haven't of a you fascination said that your wife watches the show The Crown? Yeah, she loves the royals. So you you don't you don't ever watch it with no. her? No. So you don't understand it? No, that's my time. You should ask her about it then. I don't know either. I don't know. We don't watch The Crown. <clears throat> you know anything about the royals, Cameron? <laughs> I'm with Jeff on this one. I don't understand the huge fascina- fascination. However, I do think The Crown is a good show. What is it about? The Royals. It's about the royal family, but also just like the people connected to it. Like uh, the first season starts out with Winston Churchill. Yeah, it is character. a good history watch from what my wife tells me. I just say, oh, isn't it just like Downtown Abbey and she gets mad? <laughs> Another show I've never watched. <laughs> it kind of is like Royal Downtown Abbey. Right? <laughs> you guys watch a well, lot of. The reason why she gets mad is because I purposely call it Downtown Abbey because it's supposed to be Downton Abbey, but I don't. Downtown I don't speak Abbey. the kings. I don't speak the king's English. Hashtag. Uh, they pulled it. HBO Max is pulling Dave Chappelle's show, The Chappelle Show, at his request, just like he did with Netflix. I don't know a month or so ago. Um, he's asked HBO to pull it as well due to some of uh, the uh, indifferences he has with getting paid for the uh, the repeat episodes. So HBO Max fans, you will not be able to watch that. Did you anymore. hear what the um, what the CE or the CCO of HBO Max, the chief content officer, his name's Casey Bloys, said? In reference to it, uh, he was making a keynote uh, conversation yesterday, and he said, we had a conversation with him. I won't get into it, but it's very clear that it's a very unique and specific and emotional issue he's got. Did he just diss him for having, like, an emotional issue? I don't know. You he's remember, like, he's kind of like saying, oh, he's kind of a drama king. Remember Dave Chappelle just walked off, mm-hmm. after, you know, mm-hmm. doing the Chappelle show, and we never heard from him for, mm-hmm. was it a year? I, it was a long time. I don't know if it was a year, but. So, yeah. I maybe, don't know. That's. That's not how I'm, I, I'm reading it. It sounds like it's just kind of like something that means a lot to him, you know? Okay. I, I thought, oh. I, I, I thought, but by saying it's an emotional issue that he's got, it's like saying the blame is on him. It is not on us for running it and not really getting his permission. Well, no, it is on him, and I think he owned it. I mean, when he said Netflix, he said, I'm not getting paid for it. I don't think it's right. And so I have the so what that makes I have that- the pull to get Netflix to pull it. And I don't know if he has the pull to get HBO Max to pull it, or if they're just doing him a favor or a solid because they're expecting other things from him down the road. But uh, Okay, so what about um, I want to get paid for my content <laughs> makes it very unique, specific, and emotional. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't understand. Well, there's some, there's a reason he left the show. It's, 
he he talks about it um on david <laughs> david letterman's netflix show mm -hmm. i i would suggest watching it, it like watching that if you're interested but what if i don't have the time young cameron i need you to paraphrase it for me but would you be I, able to do so i don't understand i didn't think he left the Chappelle show i thought they just finished taping it and they moved on no, 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 he left midway through. Reporting. Yeah, he he had signed a huge deal with Comedy oh, you Central. Mean, oh, you, we're talking a couple years ago, Many not years the original, ago. Yeah, decade ago, when they were going to bring yeah. it back. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought we were talking. He's talking about the original episodes that aired over a decade ago mm -hmm. that they were doing reruns of. Right. Yes. Not the new show. So that's covered on David Letterman's show. Yeah, I I don't want to paraphrase because I don't want to get it wrong because I'm not 100% sure. You got cacao right earlier. I mean, hell, you're, you're, you're Ben a thousand. Roll the dice. Yeah, go with it. Roll you're, the you're, dice. It's, you're in the, you're in the flames, know. my friend. You're hot. I, I remember he said something along the lines of like he was making, I mean, you know, you, you've watched the original Chappelle show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, yeah. of, of racial humor. Yes. And um, he was uncomfortable with the way some people were taking the humor. Mm. Yeah. Well, Which not everybody I, I gets get jokes. Because some people sometimes watch his show and don't really take it. You know, they take it as like, ooh, uh, like at face value. Yes. Know? No, I, I see what you're saying. Well, and with the climate of... It was very deep. Racial divide, if you want to call it that, lack of a better term, uh, that we feel today. I don't, I don't think today that show is appropriate. So it sounds to me that Dave Chappelle will only be happy showing old episodes of The Chappelle Show if there is a streaming service in which he can guarantee smart people can only subscribe to. No, it's a it's a matter of making sure Viacom just doesn't get any more money. <laughs> okay. So that's what it comes down to. I mean, I to. understand. Viacom sucks, dude. No, I, don't. I totally understand, too. Listen, man, I'm... There's a, there's a lot of reasons to be anti uh, big business right now. Me here, it's KZOZ online at KZOZ.com. It's time to do Know the Show. We I'm excited Seth. for this conversation because we have a thespian in here. We got <laughs> Seth in the studio, a.k.a. the thespian. We got Cameron from his home in Paso Robles. And we got Patrick calling in to win. What's Hi. up, guys? Go for it, Patty. Hey, it's uh, Hans Gruber. Yes, Alan Rickman is correct. I go. That'll do. What? What is that? Hans Gruber. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Congratulations, right. you're a winner. What you said as yeah. a follow-up on that. Yeah, that's when, Die Hard, right? Yeah. When you think bad die guy, hard. when you think bad guy, well, it's Alan Rickman uh, in just uh -huh. in general because he was such a. Great jerk. Of course, he was in Harry Potter. Yeah, and there was a pretty bad guy in that one. Yeah, I know. I mean, he wasn't the worst. He wasn't guy. That, no, the the worst guy, the one that's not supposed to be mentioned. He was the double agent. But um, he was. I mean, it, which almost made him worse because he was working on. And this, you never knew on behalf of. Yeah. But but you didn't know which side he was on. He yeah, was kinda, exactly. Yeah. Every once in a while, he would endear himself mm. and let you in. You're like thinking, oh, maybe he's okay. But then, <laughs> no, no, took one for the team. <laughs> 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 but the tears paid off, so. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not a thespian. My sister is. But. <laughs> Who is the best bad guy in your eyes in cinema? Jeremy said Danny Trejo. Uh, he's <laughs> well, well, he's like badass. He's not a bad yeah, guy. Yeah, he's badass. But it, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Maybe he's more of an antihero. Yeah, I just, usually he's like the, the bad looking good guy. Mm -hmm. Just of. scary. I mean, like in movies, who would be the all time bad guy? Mm hmm. Uh, I don't know. That's that's a tough one. The the bad women I can think like Wicked Witch of the West or something like that. But bad bad guy. There's too many. There's so many. I said, like Kevin Spacey always seems to play a bad guy. We were kind of talking about that a little bit earlier. Yeah, but he's he's like a, an almost funny bad guy. Like a, a and very, in some movies he's the good guy. Yeah, and I know? guess I don't watch all of his movies either. So, so it's like it's, it's a hard conversation to have because uh, it's hard to think about it. Like, who's a good villain? Tom Hanks is usually always playing a good guy. We talked about that He earlier. could never be a villain. Tom Hanks could never be a villain, ever. So yeah. so the Joker came up in the conversation, and mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And the thing is, I don't like watching movies where it's just how bad can humans be, you know? I like where there's a, there's a monster, is like a fantasy thing where they don't really exist, so they can be as bad oh, as they want. See. But when it's just a person being as bad, yeah, you can go pretty low. I mean, right, but I mean, when you, when you, it's the, just a person doing it, mm -hmm. man, it resonates a little louder than a uh, fake monster. Well, yeah, but I know. That, that's what I mean. That, I don't need to see it. It's that, scary. That, that exists. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the thing. Godzilla, not that we know of. Right. You know? I, I get what you're saying. I mean, did you pick somebody, Jer? What, as far as the villain goes? Yeah. 
He told you Danny Trejo. Oh, oh, oh okay. That, that's and the thing is, outside of that was the first face and name that popped in. Mm-hmm. But I can't, uh, can't I can't think of somebody who plays a regular character that is bad. Well, it's that, and it's like people asking your favorite song, and it's suddenly on the spot. It's like, well, let me go through my catalog, you know, <laughs> which is vast. My girlfriend had texted me to remind me of uh, Breaking Bad, Wal- Walter White. Yeah, antihero though, right? He's not a bad anti-hero. guy though. He's a great yeah. antihero, but he was. That was what's his name's character. That he was, was the main anything. character. He was a hero because yeah. he was he was taking that money for his family. You can yeah. see I didn't watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean he was you doing something watch bad till the end. I didn't watch. I it don't either. just it, being, it, being in a hot area doing you know drugs to keep you up all night just doesn't make me feel <laughs> comfortable. Well, <laughs> I don't like deserts and uh, yeah, it's really like not sleeping. about that. That's where it happens, but. I mean, yeah. I think you would like it. It's a great show. It's everybody says, told you. No, it's I, one of those I, I, I was in the room. My, my my stepson was watching it when it was on. And it was just like, yeah. And then yeah. Sal Goodman. That is that is a great spinoff. Almost, I think is is better. A better call Saul. Better call Saul. Yeah, <laughs> it's better. It's hey, uh, I've got I got it's chocolate covered day. You guys were saying mm-hmm. I got a chocolate covered gun. It goes cacao, cacao, cacao. <laughs> Seth is going to shoot Jeremy with it. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. 93.3 KZOZ rocks.